Have you been faced with camshaft related fault codes? Can't tell if you need a new sensor, ECU, or just need to set fire to the car? Well, let me stop you there, because today I'm going to give you an insight into the diagnostic testing methods you can use to accurately diagnose the causes of a camshaft sensor fault. Hi everyone, I'm Tim and today we're discussing the causes of camshaft position sensor fault codes. To better understand these codes, let's run through a bit of background on how a camshaft position sensor functions within an engine system. The camshaft sensor is a critical component in modern vehicle technology, providing essential information to the ECU regarding cylinder event timing. This data enables vehicles to maximise engine performance and efficiency. Modern camshaft sensors utilise Hall effect technology, where a reluctor ring with teeth located close to the sensor produces an on-off digital waveform which the ECU can then read. These sensors typically have three wires, a high and low supply and a signal wire. Now the fault codes which can be stored when there is a problem with the camshaft position sensor are P0340 through to P0344, which indicate a malfunction within the camshaft sensor circuit. These can be caused by a variety of issues such as a faulty camshaft, damaged wiring, a faulty sensor or a failing ECU. So taking a systematic approach to rule out all potential causes of these fault codes is key to determine where the fault lies. If you do end up discovering the fault is with your ECU, then we can help you out. Our expert technicians can test your unit on our hardware in the loop test rigs and remanufacture any faults found. But more on that later, let's start our investigation with the sensor. To rule out a faulty camshaft position sensor, check it is receiving the correct voltage from the ECU and that it has a good ground connection. To do this, ensure the ignition is off and disconnect the sensor. Then using your vehicle's wiring diagram, identify the connection terminals for the camshaft sensor. Turn the ignition back on and setting your multimeter to volts DC, place the red probe on the 5 volt terminal at the sensor connector and your black probe on the negative side of the battery. Check the reading on the multimeter, which should be 5 volts. Then, keeping the black probe in place, move the red probe to the signal terminal and check the multimeter reading, which should also be 5 volts. Then check the ground connection by placing the red probe on the positive side of the battery and the black probe on the ground terminal at the sensor connector. Here, the multimeter should read battery voltage of around 12.6 volts. If all of these readings are correct, then the sensor has a good ground and is receiving the correct voltages, so the problem must be with the camshaft position sensor itself. However, if these readings were outside the voltage ranges, then the sensor is good and the fault lies somewhere within the circuit. When this is the case, you will typically have either a high or low voltage circuit fault code or a combination of the two. These can be caused by a variety of electrical issues such as a short, an open or excess resistance within the 5 volt ground or signal circuit. These faults could be in the wiring loom or within the ECU, so let's run through a few tests to determine exactly where the fault lies and what is causing it. To test for a fault in the loom, we need to perform the same test as before but at the ECU connector. Again, the 5 volt and signal wires should read 5 volts and the ground should read battery voltage. If these readings are good, then you have a fault within the wiring loom which will need to be repaired. However, if you are still getting an incorrect reading, then turn the ignition off and disconnect the ECU connector to inspect it for corrosion or damage. If the connector looks good, then we need to conduct further investigations that differ depending on whether the readings are higher or lower than the expected ranges. If any of the readings are lower than expected or read zero volts, then you may have a short to ground or excess resistance within the circuit, which will typically be accompanied by a low voltage fault code. To test where in the circuit the fault lies, turn the ignition off, disconnect the ECU connector and remove the affected wire from the connector using a terminal removal tool. This process can be a bit fiddly, but ensuring you have the correct sized terminal removal tool is key, so make sure you are properly equipped before starting. Start by removing any secondary lock or barrier on the connector. Then insert your terminal removal tool to the affected terminal. Press it all the way in, whilst wiggling the wire free at the back. Once it is removed, 
plug the ECU connector back in, turn the ignition on and check the voltage at the ECU. If the reading is now good, then you can determine the fault is within the loom, which will need to be repaired. However, if the reading is still lower than expected, then there is a fault within the ECU, which will need to be rebuilt. However, before sending your unit in, you need to determine if the ECU fault has been caused by internal component failure or a fault within the loom. This is to ensure that once you refit the remanufactured ECU to the vehicle, it isn't damaged again by a short within the loom. To rule out the loom, set your multimeter to ohms and perform a continuity test between the negative side of the battery and the affected wire. As this wire has been removed from the terminal, there should be no resistance whatsoever between it and the battery ground. So if there is any resistance displayed, then there is a short presence in the loom which will need to be repaired as well as the ECU. If you have a high voltage fault code and the multimeter reading was higher than expected when testing at the ECU connector, you may have a shorter voltage within the circuit. The testing method for this is similar to the previous one. So disconnect the ECU connector and remove the affected terminal before plugging the connector back in. This time, probe at the removed terminal end and if voltage remains in the wire, then there is a shorter voltage present within the wiring loop. To confirm the fault is only present in the loom and not in both the loom and ECU, move the red probe to the ECU connector side of the affected wire. If the correct voltage is displayed here, then you can confirm the fault is only with the loom, which will need to be repaired. If the voltage is still outside the expected range, then there is a short within the ECU, which again will need to be rebuilt. And that's all the circuit checks required to accurately diagnose a camshaft related fault code. If during any of these checks you suspect the loom to be faulty, then an easy test to determine which wires are causing the issue is to check continuity between the affected wire at the sensor connector and every other pin on the ECU connector. Make a note of which wires produce any resistance as they will be at fault. However, if you suspect your ECU to be faulty, then don't go rushing to the dealership. They will always simply recommend you replace the unit at a huge expense when the fault can actually be rectified with a bit of expert remanufacturing. Here at ECU Testing, we have developed specialized test rigs which can identify any fault with an ECU, which our expert technicians can then remanufacture fully so the fault never returns. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments and we will be happy to help you out. I'll see you next time. That's all I can get.